Thank you very much, Ambassador Kelly, for sponsoring this uh, discussion. I will speak broadly in terms of the background and what to expect at the November conference and also my views on the relationship between the NPT review process and the drive to achieve a Middle East nuclear weapon and WMD free zone. So in normal times, this would have been an in-person event at the United Nations in New York, but we are not in normal times. In addition to a long lasting deadly pandemic, we're also facing the beginning of a new cold war with modernization of nuclear weapons and development of destabilizing new weapons technologies, acute climate change and a near complete collapse of the UN disarmament machinery. One highly regrettable consequence of the pandemic has been the near complete shut off of civil society to the UN premises in New York and thus to the Frisk Committee. This exclusion likely also will extend to next month's UN Middle East Conference and to the NPT Review Conference in January 2022. To an extent, this may not be surprising as the UN Charter opens with the famous words, we the peoples of the United Nations, but then it never comes back to referring to the peoples. Anyway, talking about nuclear weapon free zones, in terms of new nuclear weapon free zones, the Middle East remains an old unfulfilled obligation. There is as yet no final agreement on the details of a treaty on the Middle East WMD free zone. However, keeping to basics, it is possible to identify practical measures and elements as is endeavored in the draft treaty text prepared by the METO project to be described shortly by my colleagues. Uh, time does not allow me to uh, go into too many details about the background of the Middle East uh, Review Conference, uh, rather the Middle East uh, uh, WMD Free Conference uh, uh, history, but let me briefly uh, say to you what I believe is uh, the current situation. Ambassador Kelly already mentioned the holding of the 2019 conference, and that was uh, mandated by a General Assembly decision in 2018, which was adopted by a vote of 103 in favor with three opposed and uh, 71 abstentions. This was decision 73 slash 546 on convening a conference on the establishment of a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction. The General Assembly decision called on the UN Secretary General to one, convene a conference for the duration of one week to be held no later than 2019, dealing with the establishment of a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction. Two, the conference shall take as its terms of reference the 1995 resolution adopted at the Review and Extension Conference, which was part of an interlinked package of decisions and resolution that allowed the indefinite extension of the NPT without a vote. Next, the conference shall aim at elaborating a legally binding treaty establishing a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction on the basis of arrangements freely arrived at by the states of the region. All decisions emanating from the conference shall be taken by consensus by the states of the region. All states of the Middle East, the three co-sponsors of the 1995 resolution, that is the United Kingdom, the Russian Federation and the United States, the two other nuclear weapon states, China and France, and relevant international organizations such as the IAEA, the OPCW, and the Implementation Support Unit of the BTWC all are invited to participate. And lastly, for the UN Secretary General to convene annual sessions of the conference for a duration of one week at United Nations headquarters until the conference concludes the elaboration of a legally binding treaty on the basis of arrangements freely arrived at by the states of the region. Accordingly, the first session of the conference was held at UN headquarters from the 18th to the 22nd of November 2019 with the conference president, Ambassador Sima Sami Bahus, permanent representative of Jordan to the United Nations. Israel did not attend, nor did the United States. As Ambassador Kelly already mentioned, the November 2019 conference adopted a political declaration. This declaration inter alia welcomed all initiatives, resolutions, decisions, and recommendations. We consider the MITO project as contributing to this UN mandated effort. The 2020 session of the conference was postponed on an exceptional basis to be held no later than November this year. It is now scheduled from the 29th of November to the 3rd of December. The president-designate is Ambassador Mansoor Ayad Sheikh al of Kuwait, permanent representative to the United Nations in New York. 
It is my understanding that the NPT states of the region of the Middle East consider the following. One, the 2018 General Assembly resolution on convening a conference on the zone was a breakthrough. Two, the new initiative through the General Assembly is directed at all states of the region of the Middle East. The three co-sponsors of the 1995 resolution, together with the two other nuclear weapon states, they are all invited and no states of the region shall be excluded. Three, while the General Assembly route was not ideal, it was resorted to as there was no realistic alternative due to the prevailing situation regionally and globally and the oppositional attitude of the United States and some others at the 2015 NPT review conference. And fourth, the initiative shall be fully inclusive, involve direct dialogue, be based on arrangements freely arrived at. There will be no singling out of any state of the region. However, if any state of the region does not attend, this cannot prevent other states of the region to attend the conference. As regards the UN Middle East Conference and the Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Process, at the 2019 NPT PrepCom, several states welcomed the upcoming 2019 Middle East Conference. The NPT PrepCom chair's working paper took factual note of the General Assembly decision to convene the conference, albeit some aggressive and unfortunate statements were made by two states parties criticizing the General Assembly decision and the conference. Regarding the question of how to deal with the Middle East issue at the 10th NPT review conference postponed now, and it will be held from the 4th to the 28th of January uh, next year uh, because of the COVID pandemic, it is my understanding that the following 11 points are relevant. One, the Middle East issue can now be considered as the fourth pillar of the NPT. Two, the NPT review process remains the primary focus and the General Assembly initiative is not an alternative to the NPT process, but should be regarded as parallel and complementary. Three, the conference could alleviate pressure on the 2022 NPT review conference. Four, there is no intention by the NPT states of the region to turn the Middle East issue into a stumbling block towards the success of the NPT review conference, and they want the review conference to be successful. Five, the Middle East zone issue remains within the NPT process and the 10th review conference would have to reaffirm and recognize this. Six, the NPT states of the region believe in collective, not selective security, and this calls for the universalization of the NPT and the cessation of granting privileges to states not party to the treaty. Seven, regarding the three co-sponsors of the 1995 NPT Review and Extension Conference Resolution, the United Kingdom has voiced support for the vision of a Middle East WMD free zone. The Russian Federation endorsed the convening of the conference and attended the November 2019 session, which it regarded as easing pressure on the 10th NPT Review Conference. Its working paper for the 2021 uh, conference inter alia states that Russia is ready to provide comprehensive expert and political support to efforts to establish a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons following the adoption of phased decisions by consensus with the participation of all countries of the region. And the United States has indicated support for the eventual goal of a Middle East free of WMD based on direct dialogue and consensus. For their part, China and France continue to extend considerable support for the objective and the relevant processes. Eight, the 2018 decision garnered more than 100 affirmative votes at the General Assembly, which was a clear and unmistakable majority. Nine, the UN conference shall be open to all states, and it is important for these states to fully engage and facilitate the modalities and procedural aspects. Ten, the assertion is incorrect that Israel was not consulted in advance of the 2018 resolution at the General Assembly. In fact, it was consulted and um, informed in advance of the decision. And lastly, 11. The November 2021 UN conference should provide another opportunity to all states of the region to meet and discuss zone matters, express views. All decisions shall be by consensus. It will be an opportunity for direct consultations amongst the states of the region of the Middle East as well as others. And it will be up to the states of the region to decide when and how to negotiate a future treaty in accordance with General Assembly and Disarmament Commission uh, principles. The Middle East zone also is the subject of discussion at the International Atomic Energy Agency in meetings of its Board of Governors and the General Conference. 
the IAEA Director General is mandated to issue an annual report on the application of safeguards in the Middle East, a responsibility that was assigned to me by the Director General during my decade-long service at the agency. In my view, states of the region of the Middle East should make use of the expertise of the IAEA in the formulation of a verification system for a Middle East nuclear weapon-free zone, just as all other operational zones in Mongolia have done. Extra regional states must stop undue interference and cease their oppositional activities and influencing in this regard. I must add that all states of the Middle East region are members uh, of the IAEA and therefore this is an inclusive forum. The MEDO project is for a zone free of WMD in the Middle East represents the civil society initiative that was launched and sustained by Sharon Dolev of the Israeli disarmament movement and it has attracted support from experts from states of the region of the Middle East, as well as from other countries. The sponsorship of this and previous side events by Ireland and the sponsorship of a previous consultative meeting in Edinburgh by the Parliament of Scotland, as well as support from other governmental and non-governmental sponsors and supporters is testament to the wide interest the METO project has and in advancing the cause of the Middle East zone. The following presentations, colleagues from the METO project will be describing the various elements of a possible draft for the consideration of delegations from the region and by others. To conclude, I personally hope that at the UN Middle East Conference next month and at the NPT Review Conference in January, the states of the region and other states, as well as international organizations in attendance, can draw motivation, ideas, and elements from the draft treaty text prepared by the METO project as they consider and discuss the various aspects of a potential future treaty that could garner the support of the states of the region. Some may find shortcomings or omissions in the draft text, but states of the region and other concerned parties are invited to further develop, enhance, and enrich the elements presented. This effort needs to be joined not by skeptics nor naysayers, but by optimists and those who are serious about promoting the cause of a Middle East free of weapons of mass destruction and of its transformation into a region of peace, justice, security, and development. The peoples of that region deserve no less. Thank you very much, Paul.